This is Anna. Anna is a six-year-old girl who dreams of one day becoming a doctor. However, she has one major obstacle to overcome. She is terribly ill. She has an extremely rare disease that will take her life unless you can help save her and fund a new drug that is being developed to treat her. If we can raise just $300,000, we can develop a medicine that will save her life. How much would you be willing to donate to help save her? Now, what if I told you that just a few towns away live five other children named Aman, Ibo, Jonas, Ajani and Laija. They love playing football together and all have big dreams of their own. Sadly, they're also very, very sick and all have a different but equally rare disease as Anna. To develop a medicine to save these children, we need to again raise $300,000. But now we can save all five of their lives. How much would you donate to help save them? While the second option might seem as a rational option, people simply are not rational beings. Research has shown that if group one is shown the story of the five children and group two is shown the story of just Anna, those who are shown the single child give more money than those who are shown the group of five children. That's because people are wired to deeply connect on an individual level, while cognitively we feel empathy for the group of children. It is much easier to emotionally connect with an individual. Now, let's say I'm feeling generous and I'm giving you 10,000 bucks to donate to charity. Which charity would you choose and why? Perhaps you've seen a commercial on TV that persuaded you. Or maybe you were approached on the street and had interesting conversation with a fundraiser of the charity. Or there might be a particular charity you have a special connection to, due to an illness in your family. Not only how much you give, but also the choice of which charity you give to is, at least for most people, a very emotional decision. We give based on what feels good, but what if I told you that there is another way to give, a way that might help others even more? Effective altruism, also called effective giving, is a philosophy and social movement that advocates using evidence and reasoning to determine the most effective ways to benefit others. Keeping it in mind, let's see how different causes compare to each other. In the blue corner, one of the most famous museums in the world. Put your hands together for MoMA versus in the red corner, contributing to a world with zero blindness due to avoidable causes. Give it up for Side Savers! Let's say you spent those $10,000 on supporting MoMA since you are a true modern art lover. And let's assume that your donation will allow them to buy one painting, one painting which will be seen and enjoyed by about 10% of the 3 million yearly visitors. Or you can spend that money on Side Savers, a charity that focuses on utilizing surgery, antibiotics and education to prevent and cure blindness. And your donation will help prevent 100 to 300 years of blindness and 100 to 300 years of low vision. Wow, that's, wow, that's amazing. Wow, that's beautiful. What do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I can't see anything. I know, right? It's just truly mesmerizing. This, this vast nothingness that the artist manages to capture. Oh. Ah. Uh -huh. And the winner is... Side Savers! And now for the main event. In the blue corner, making children's dreams come true, we have 
Make a wish foundation. Versus in the red's corner, protecting the world against deadly mosquitoes. Let me hear it for the Against Malaria Foundation. Those ten thousand dollars is approximately the price of making one sick child's wish come true, giving them an amazing day that they will never forget. Make a wish foundation working the job. For the same money, the Against Malaria Foundation can get two thousand insecticide treated bed nets purchased and distributed, which will save roughly three lives. And that's what I call a punch, going straight for the knockout. Make a wish stains down, what a win for the Against Malaria Foundation! Alright, those two matchups were relatively straightforward, but it can get very complicated. Would you rather give those $10,000 to preventing blindness, protecting people from malaria, or vaccinating children. Which cause is better, and for each cause, what would be the best possible intervention? Luckily, every year there is more and more research being done by organizations such as JPAL and IPA. No, not that IPA, I mean Innovation for Poverty Action. They do very clever experiments to determine what the impact is of different interventions. In order to compare those impacts, a metric that is often used is called DALIS. DALI stands for Disability Adjusted Life Year and measures the negative impact of an illness. For a certain disease or disorder, you can calculate DALIS by adding the years of life lost to the years lived with disability. Let me clarify that with two simplified examples. Let's say Bob's life expectancy is 80 years. However, at 50 years old, he has a sudden heart attack, of which he ends up passing away. And he did not feel ill before he had the heart attack. So, his dalis would equal the years of life he lost, which is 30, plus the years lived, which is disability, which is zero. Now let's say Bob does survive his heart attack, but his quality of life is severely diminished. He is short of breath and feels tired when at rest. He avoids physical activity for fear of worsening his breathing problem. He passes away at 70 years old. Now his dali equals years of life lost, which is 10, plus years lived with disability, which is 20. We, however, still need to multiply these 20 years by 0.2. This 0.2 indicates uh, the weight or the severity of the disease. 0 would be equal to perfect health, while 1 is equivalent to death. While these weights are, of course, estimates, it allows researchers to compare the burden of a disease, like has been done in this map, showcasing the Dalis for 100,000 individuals all over the world. Here we can see that the highest disease burden is in Sub-Saharan Africa and some areas in Asia. That is in part because the types of disease impacting the local population are quite different. Now that we know this, let's not focus on the total disease burden, but on how we can avert it. In order to avert disease in high income countries, we need to focus on healing diseases related to old age and to work stress. But developing a new cancer drug, for example, costs hundreds of millions of dollars. On the other hand, as we've seen earlier, spending $10,000 on insecticide treated bed nets can literally save several lives. Now, with all that information in mind, can we finally answer the question, what is the world's best charity? Mm, kind of. While it's not straightforward to pinpoint one single best charity, organizations such as GiveWell have done a tremendous job showcasing some of the most cost-effective charities that are supported by thorough research. That means that these charities will avert the most disability-adjusted life years per dollar spent, or more simply put, 
per dollar raised, they will have the biggest positive impact. For example, charities focusing on preventing malaria, such as the Malaria Consortium and the Against Malaria Foundation. Charities focusing on preventing vitamin A deficiency in children under five, such as Helen Keller International. And charities focusing on treatments for parasitic worm infections, such as Evidence Action and the Ant Fund. I bet that you didn't think that vitamin A pills and getting rid of little worms could have such a positive impact on their life expectancy and their quality of life. But that's exactly why I'm making this video. Because giving to charity shouldn't be about your gut feeling, pun intended. It should be about doing the most good. And I know that sounds a bit preachy, so to be clear, I'm not trying to shame anyone. You're obviously free to do with your money however you see fit. No, I'm, I'm simply trying to show you that your donation can have a profound impact on this world. So, whether you give big or small, a little bit of due diligence goes a long way. On that note, I have to admit that I am an absolute hypocrite and I have given very little money to charity in my life. I would like to publicly announce I'm going to commit to donating a percentage of my income each month to GiveWell's Maximum Impact Fund. And I would like to encourage you to do the same if you're financially able to. If you want to learn more about the factor of altruism, I can really recommend Poor Economics by Apijit Banerjee and Asher Duflo or The Most Good You Can Do by Peter Singer. I also put some additional references in the description. Thank you so much for watching.